All righty, and welcome to the show is personal trainer and nurse and Beyond the Fit podcast host, Holly Cotton is here on the show. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. Anytime. We always love just deep Q&As where it's just like, hey, we are, <laughs> we, we are getting a sense of goals and how to even just better ourselves and uh, realize that, you know, we need more than just a doctor or just you know, people we know personally to tell us how to live, you know, we got to keep setting new routines for us to do second nature, you know, every day. <laughs> right, exactly. Continual learning, continual learning, right. So uh, when did you decide uh, to share a lot of your real life stories, including the 21 day meal and... <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> when, when did you feel is like, hey, I got all this knowledge, someone needs to know about it, market as part of my living and uh you know I'll uh those who are willing you know I'm going to train you on how to do this right right well honestly um I've been a nurse for a long time since college and so I have this huge medical background first of all and then also I am actually a college professor so I teach oh, nurse awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I teach nursing students as well. And so health and wellness has just always been like at the forefront of everything because I've never been one of those medical professionals where I don't practice what I preach. Like, how am I supposed to tell you to reduce your sodium intake? And then I eat a Popeye's special every Tuesday, you know, yes, like, oh. yes. <laughs> so I kind of have always had like a healthy lifestyle. And then it's just progressed. I mean, every year you, you know, like you said, you're, we're redefining goals. We're redoing things like what is our focus? You know, you have to find different things that interest you or else you get kind of bored with doing the same thing every day. So that's a big thing with fitness is that you have to constantly have that motivation to continue, you know, creating new goals. What am I doing this year? Am I trying to build muscle? Am I going to do that? Do I want to be healthy? Do you know, whatever. So it's just a constant thing. So I think it's just all of that and the involvement over my career and everything. So, and that's, this is who I am today with all these other things that I'm doing. Okay. Very excellent. And uh, who were your mentors? Just to go back a bit, just like people who you just had in your life just saying, Hey, you know, you got this. Honestly, no one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's even more awesome. Yeah. <laughs> As an adult, like now, I do have people that I look for, uh, I look up to, and I look forward to, you know, having conversations with and things like that. But honestly, I basically have always had to kind of figure things out on my own. I'm from Louisiana, and I come, I had a great mom and dad, but they didn't teach me anything about life. Like there was no realistic life lessons. It was just go out and figure out life on your own, you know? And so, you know, I went to college off of my own first to go to college in my family, you know? So like, it was just, I'm, I've been the first, like the pioneer for so many things that I kind of have left a trail for other people, you know, to say, Hey, how are you doing that? And what are you doing? And now just like in the last maybe three or four years, I finally have like different people that I have networked with where I'm just like, Oh, so this is a thing. Oh, this is what I should be doing. Oh, or, you know, this is that direction I need to go. So it's kind of everything. I just pretty much, you know, just independently kind of just, and then if it didn't work, I'm like, mm, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> Let me try something else. Let me go a different way about that. So it's just kind of trial and error. Uh, but yeah, not really any mentors or anything until, you know, later in life, unfortunately. So well, that's still a positive thing. Cause it's like you, you answer yourself at the end of the day. So, and, that is. <laughs> but at least you, you know, you realized, Hey, you know, cause would you say more people rely on motivation versus having other people boss them around? even though they don't like being bossed around, they still just, they need someone to get, make them come out of their shell and kind of go about the world, determine their life. <laughs> Honestly, what I tell people is you can have all the, all the motivation in the world. You can have all the inspirational quotes in you in the world, but 
discipline is what it is that's going to determine your success at whatever you want because discipline is what makes you go every day and discipline is what you know you have to do every day and you can especially you know like even with like your podcast like you yeah different have ways to make a break. podcast <laughs> yeah like even that like you're like oh god i don't feel like editing i don't feel like doing this i don't feel like and it's so <laughs> easy to not do it no matter how motivated you are but it's that discipline where you know if i don't do it it won't get done i need to do it i need whatever it is in life you know so it's the discipline that's there so you can be around all the happy people you want and yeah that you might be contagious but after you walk away from that conversation the motivation and inspiration is in there, but unless you have that discipline to actually take action, it's a waste of time. Exactly. That's very well stated. Um, and uh, so uh, how, when did you embrace fitness? Was it uh, post cancer scare or was it uh, yeah. much after? Okay. So, well, I've always been, like I said, I've always had a healthy lifestyle and I've always been in the fitness, I guess, or a fit look. And I was more of like a real super cardio person. You know, I did all the, remember when DVDs and all of this stuff, like, yes, yeah. got like 30, <laughs> and all these awesome programs and everybody was working out at home. So like, I've always been kind of into that, you know, and, uh, and so this year, right, um, 2022, October 2022, I'll actually be 10 years since I was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. So after I, so I was diagnosed at the end of 2012. And basically, you know, I just did this whole thing where, you know, now, shit, here I am. And <laughs> I got cancer. And I, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, what? Why me? And so after like a year, I guess or so of trying to recover, because I mean, it's surgeries, it's all of these things you have to do is treatment. Mm -hmm. And finally, when I came kind of like abreast of, of all of these things that were on me, I was like, okay, so now what? Like, what am I supposed to do now? Do I go back to the same person I was before? Am I going to allow this to change me? And I actually wrote a book about um, being strong. And in the book, I talk about how, you know, when after I had surgery, I couldn't even put my hair in a ponytail. I couldn't yes. bend over, shave my legs, like all of these little things I had to basically be able to do because I have no, I had breast cancer. So like I had like all of the, the skin from my armpit, like kind of removed. So even now it's limited in how many things I can stretch. I can't do a push up or a pull up. So I just use that as an opportunity to redefine what strong was for me. And also what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. What was my purpose? Why did I survive? And I kind of just went off on that tangent. And then like, <laughs> like 10 years later, I'm like, wow, it's really been 10 years this year. But I just feel like that was kind of my whole direction of, I will never be this weak again in life. I will never be weak and, you know, not being able to do this. And yeah, I can't do a pull up, but what else can I do? Like, okay, I can't do a push up, but now what else can I do? And that's kind of there like, yeah, exactly. So that I kind of did that in like the last five years, I really started like trying to start with weight training and that pretty much propelled my whole fitness journey and just probably took a year or two just learning proper body mechanics learning what works learning what works for my body and then that's now I have a different style of training if you follow me on Instagram or you see I I do I don't just do the cute little girly <laughs> let's go take 32 selfies like I'm really working working when I go to the gym so that's pretty much how all of my style of training and how I try to teach other women that it's okay to be strong. We don't have to just do, you know, booty exercises. Everybody, yes. wants to do, but <laughs> can we do upper body too? Can we do, can we do something else? <laughs> can we do a little bit of back today? Biceps. It's okay to have a, you know, upper and lower. So yeah. So all of that kind of just defined uh, who I am and, and how I got to where fitness was such an integral part of my, my body and, and my lifestyle. Thousand percent. You have a great line, which is again, don't be discouraged by slow results. Um, uh, why, why do you think it is some will latch on to that advice? It's just, we somehow have to remind people that again, results don't happen overnight. 
And again, your top three tips are stop minimize, minimizing accomplishments, focus on your diet, and don't be afraid of failure. There you and, go. <laughs> but why, why do you think that is? That as much as we have told people, we, we keep realizing about, you know, what foods are organic versus which are natural, which ones are, uh, you know, uh, about fame versus fortune, about, again, like you say, better living versus what you actually want in life. It's uh, why do you think we still have to keep going back to the drawing board and remind everyone, again, we're, we're not genie in a bottle. We're actually, you know, we're all human. It, it comes right back to what I said about the discipline. Because, I mean, and I tell this to anyone, like, I'm so transparent with my fitness journey as well. Like, every day I wake up, I am not motivated. <laughs> like, yeah. every day I do not. <laughs> like, people think just because you're, like, healthy and you're working out, like, you, you just, want like, to do this. Yeah. yeah, like, today I was like, I don't. Like, and I only went to the gym 45 minutes a day, which is completely, like, just, and I had, like, a terrible workout. But I went. And that's part of the discipline. So it's the same thing. When I go to eat at a restaurant, you don't, I want mozzarella cheese sticks every day too. I want the cheesy nachos. I want everything. And so, you know, it's, it's all about give and take, but if you're doing more of the consuming bad things and not the good things, yeah, everybody's like, yeah, moderation. Oh, it's my cheat meal. And that's great. It's norm. It's great to have a normal life, but it's that daily discipline is what's going to define how your results are. And people don't want to do the daily discipline. Discipline. And I know because I do online, not anymore right now because I have too many other things, but I've done online training and I'm like, hey, I'm not there to smack the tacos out of your hand on Taco Tuesday. Like you have to figure out a healthy option, you know, follow my meal plan. <laughs> like I even wrote a whole meal plan to help out. And it's just that daily discipline and people don't want to do it. It's boring. But who wants to eat, you know, chicken breast and, and healthy crap all day? Not me either, but I have a certain physique that I want and I know it takes that discipline every day to get it. So a thousand percent. <laughs> and uh, I also went to university of Texas in Arlington. So uh, <laughs> what, what, what class were you? I was class of 2015 in film and art. <laughs> when did I graduate? I, I went for my master's. Mm, 13, right. 14. But you later got at Western Governors University. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no. So 2013 UTA and then 2015 or 16 was Western Governors. Nice. The world's a right. small place. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's another thing is like a lot of people want to get a certain certificate. And um, mm -hmm. half the time you find out the hard way that the advisor isn't suggesting the best uh, route for how you want to go about, you know, because you're on a tight budget and uh, you got to figure out your life versus, again, your future career. Um, uh, well, what kind of courses and classes do you recommend for anyone who wants to actually become a fitness guru and make that their career? So, again, I... It's different for everyone, I know, but yeah. is this... <laughs> well, it's not... So because I do teach nursing, I do, I'm more in the medical background of it, but I always recommend, even though, like you said, people want the cert, uh, certificates and the certifications and stuff like that. And I always recommend that people do get a trade. So even though, you know, anything that I do, like I don't get on Instagram and I know a lot of people do and they get on and they promote themselves as a health advocate or a mental health advocate or a fit or personal trainer or whatever. Like I have certifications for everything. Like I'm not going to open my mouth and ever be like, Hey, I'm a health coach and this and that I am, I have a certification, you know, like I don't. <laughs> so for me, certifications is like a validation for, for whatever I do. Cause I, I want people to trust what I'm saying, something that I'm coming from a expert opinion per se. So it just depends on what exactly you want to do. You know, if you want to go that route where you want to be a personal trainer, because I am a certified personal trainer and I'm also a certified fitness instructor. Um, so I can do group classes if I wanted to do boot camps, things like that. So it just kind of depends on what direction you want to go. And you also have to know that now mental health is such a huge aspect of Correct. everything. So if you add on something, like if you add on some type of health coach or nutritionist or some type of, you know, something mental health, anger management, whatever, like those types of things are really, really marketable because people 
need to figure out why they aren't disciplined. <laughs> What's going on with you internally that this is so hard for you to stick to? Um, if you're obese, how did you get, I, I don't know if you ever watch like any of those shows like 600 pound life, Dr. Now always makes the overweight people go to therapy. Like what made you eat yourself to this point? So that's really important too, whenever you're doing something, yeah. like if you really want to have a good career in fitness, you need to be able to answer those questions. And I can tell you, there's a lot of girls right now that are on, and even, even guys, cause they ask me questions and I'm like, so you're on social media being a fitness instructor and yet you're telling people wrong things. You don't know about carbohydrates and how they break down and the difference between simple carbs and complex. Carbs. Like there's a lot of education that people don't do just because you show someone how to lift a, a weight properly doesn't mean that they're qualified to tell you how to have a whole fitness regimen, you know? So uh, that would be my recommendation. If you want to get a certification, like just think longevity and add that to your basic trade. So certified personal trainer. And then what can I add to that to make myself more marketable so I can actually make this a career? You just brought up again, 10 different key points is like, oh, you got to do it back. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Cause it's like, you got to do background checks on everyone. It's like, okay, well, they're great for this part, but they only know a quarter of the whole, you know, food pyramid and the, fitness regime and like you say it just uh some people will only go with just one expert it's like no get a bunch of different experts and then figure out how it works for you and right you, like you or say your career then you be the expert that has all of that information so when i come to you you can give me all of these different things because you are certified or can you have education or at least some knowledge about certain things you know that that's important Wonderful. And you mentioned, you know, reality shows. At, we're now in a day and age where finally we've been able to pull behind the curtain and realize it's like, okay, it's it's a game show or it's been staged, but there's like, there's only one portion of this that's real or legit. So uh, are there any uh, fitness documentaries that you recommend? Because hmm. most people will just have MLB or ESPN all day, but then they're just, right. that leaves them even more depressed because they're like, I want to be like that guy or that gal. I know. Actually, I don't. Now, I do. I, I, okay. So I do watch 600 Pound Life. <laughs> It's like, fine. You got to have an obsession. It's fine. No, I do like that show, but you know, I did like, um, I know you said like game shows or whatever, but I did kind of like the biggest loser because even though it was kind of, you know, game showy, I did like that they made it fun and that they made it challenging and they made it that they're competing for something. And I think a lot of times that competitive nature will pull something out of you and and kind of pull that discipline out will motivate you I know for me I hate to lose like I hate it yes. like, I am like I am so like I will try until there is like there what God has to be like Holly uh, just stop it's over <laughs> because I'm like no let me just try one more time um so those types of things I think are really good for that platform. So I do, I, I guess like that would be, or even if you worked out like, <laughs> like, and that's why people always do like those things on social media. It's like they have um, like those, you know, uh, 21 day um, uh, competitions and, you know, the before and after pictures or 90 days, whatever. The even the ice bucket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can do yeah, a video, yeah, I tag right. you. It's, right. I, I pass it to you. It's, it's video tag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, whatever it takes to get some people motivated and some people, I'm very independent. So for me, I don't really need someone to push me to do it, but some people really do like, so they need that encouragement and that group and all of that. So I think, you know, probably like the, those kind of shows, I would definitely, you know, pick up some tips, see, and when they're sitting on a sofa crying about why they're fat or, you know, overweight or have an unhealthy lifestyle, maybe they could, you know, also relate to like, oh yeah, that's kind of like what I'm feeling too. So, you know. Nice. No, very cool. And mm -hmm. um, when did you, again, a little backtrack, uh, when did you first kind of uh, uh, study uh, nursing science? Oh, I've been a nurse since 2001. Nice. I, and, and and what do you think just clicked about it other than just the typical is like, I'm meant to be helping others, you know, in need? No, that really wasn't me. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I am a nurturing person and I've always kind of been that way. But 
honestly, I wanted to find a trade that, you know, that I could stay in that had lots of job opportunities that allowed me to grow in that trade career choice, you know, so the, all of those factors kind of fed into why I decided to go into nursing because it's such, I mean, you, there's nurses that are, you know, 80 years old, they come out of retirement and they go back to nursing again. Like it's just never, it never ends. Like you can be a nurse till you die, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, <laughs> so you just if something and, and if something you know there's so many different genres of nursing also so if, if you, like hospital hands-on was never my forte pediatrics I don't like working with sick kids that was never my forte so it also allows that ability to kind of just be wherever you feel like you're needed so yeah I've been a nurse for like forever and then now I kind of like I'm like oh I don't I don't touch people anymore like I'm <laughs> you know like I'm a nurse manager I'm a, a college professor like I mean I'll save your life if I have to but like the floor nursing and passing medications and all of that like that's I mean kudos to them because I just don't have the patience anymore in life for that like I serve my time so leave that to the new nurses <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough uh, so, shit, I just actually forgot, <laughs> I lost my, lost my train in questions. Okay, so, um, all together, uh, since you have this voice and you have all this advice, uh, have you been tempted to actually try, uh, doing a TED Talk by any chance? Well, I do have a show with Ebony Magazine called Beyond the Fit, so mm -hmm. I actually had someone they reached out to me about it because like I would do like little videos on Instagram and I you know I did like a couple of little you know podcast YouTube videos and stuff and then they actually reached out to me and they were like hey would you be interested in having a podcast with Ebony Magazine and I'm like uh hell yeah like <laughs> of course I would like yeah so I was like okay and then all of a sudden like in October all of this came out and you know I just started like just it's like a whirlwind of, of that and I've learned a lot along the way so I think that I like it because it gives me a platform to tell like express that and you know like just like you're doing interviewing people that giving me a different perspective and things learning things that I wouldn't even have even thought that I didn't know and and all of that you know different topics and stuff so you know that's kind of like where my voice is now um with my podcast and then I also am an author, so I have two books, um, Strong More Than Muscles, and then I also have a book called Day One, A Guide to Organizing and Executing Your Goals, which I wrote about, um, you know, that, and I have an e-course that goes with that. So I do a lot of, like, talking about goals and, you know, how to achieve goals, how to take the dream out of your head and make it into a tangible goal so you can achieve mm -hmm. it. So I do a lot of talking about that, too. And I, I mean, I just, I feel like I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, that's great. Like if anyone is able to extract anything that actually relates to their life, that's pertinent to their situation and they can win with it. I, I love it. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. So that's a thousand percent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, once again, you also summed up how, again, you know, you're a risk taker and again, you know, uh, what, what do you have to lose? You know, sharing advice and making people just realize they they can they have greater potential <laughs> right right I read a, a quote and that kind of just pushed me to really because I had my first published book and then I was kind of going back and forth about the second book because I wanted to do something that was completely different about cancer and being it's strong or whatever and so you know, I was, one of my mentors was like, what comes easy to you that's difficult for other people? And I was like, apparently goals and being motivated and whatever. Everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I start wrote a book about that, but I read a quote and it said, if there's a 1% chance of winning, why aren't you fighting for it? And like, that's just been my philosophy in life for like the last two or three years since I read that quote. Like, 
I, when I don't feel like it, or I feel discouraged, or I feel like this is some bull crap, like this is not going to work. And then I always think about that. Well, what if that 1% hits? What if I, what if this is the 1%? What if I figure out the 1%, but I gave up before I hit it? So that's kind of like my philosophy in life. Like, where's my 1%? Is there a 1% before I stop? 1%, where's my 1%? You know, so <laughs> that's pretty much how I, I live now. A thousand percent. And, uh, you know, once again, you, you brought up some great issues, you know, guys are so worried about having muscles, girls are so worried about being beautiful. We're in this society where again, you know, people are still just falling victim to the oldest formulas, you know, it's like, you, you can try anything, but is your heart in it? Is your motivation at a high, you know? <laughs> and, right. And, but, and unfortunately, many just don't realize they instantly just look at the whole, I can afford it. I'm like, yeah, but are you going to spend time on it? You know, right. <laughs> money down the drain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't mind spending trips. money. I hate wasting money and mm -hmm. I don't want people wasting money either. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, so, uh, well, once again, uh, you have, uh, so again, your, your books, you've figured out how to sell them. Your podcast is grooving. Um, any other potential projects that you're tempted to promote? <laughs> Well, so I have a company called Strong Squad. And mm -hmm. so th the gist of it all is after cancer, I, like I said, I went through that transitional period where I was like, okay, now what am I going to do about this? And so when, when I started working out or whatever, and like every time I talked about being strong, I always would have like this catchphrase that strong is more than muscle, strong is more than muscles. And it took me to get humble to where I realized I was the weakest ever to realize that sometimes your strength is mental strength. It's your spiritual strength. Like, what is it? So I kind of went on that and I started writing a book called Strong is More Than Muscles. So then that kind of just, I came with this whole idea and then I wound up just starting a company called Strong Squad. And that's like my company. And then I, you know, like I have like all fitness accessories and all kind of other stuff that goes with that apparel, you know, all of those things. And so it kind of led me down this path of, using my strong from surviving cancer to inspire other people. And I didn't even realize that that was like what I was supposed to do in life. And, you know, like it, I always say, I went from the shift of why me, like, why the hell is this happened to me? I, I'm the one that's healthy. I never smoked a cigarette. I never did these things. Like, why would I get cancer of all the people in the world? And then I shifted that to, well, why me? Like, obviously I survived for a purpose. And now what is that purpose? And it, my purpose is to inspire other people to use my story to share. And it's not just a story of cancer. It's just a story of survivorship. And I say all the time that everyone is a life survivor. My survivor story, my most recent survivor story is cancer, but I've survived other things. I've survived a bad marriage. I've survived being a single mom. I've survived all these other things, you know, so everyone has a survivor story where they have to come out stronger on the other side. So that kind of was like the whole thing with my, with my company. So I have, you know, that's like my platform of being strong. And then of course, you know, now I'm, everybody looks at me as I'm the, you know, the leader of strong squad. So what am I doing? <laughs> I can't fall yeah. off and not be in shape or I can't fall off and just give up and say, all right, well, it was a good run. See y'all later, you know, things right. for five <laughs> years, but I'm done with that. So, you know, that's kind of like my, my, my entrepreneur part of everything that I do is my strong squad. And then, like I said, that has my fitness stuff underneath it. And then I have technically like strong squad, my company, it, the incorporation part, and that's where my books and speaking and all of this other stuff falls under that umbrella as well. So I always have stuff going on. Like I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Uh, you haven't accomplished anything if you're not tired. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sleep? What's that? So Please. this has been a delight. <laughs> Thank you for being on here. And once again, I'll be sure to uh, promote, again, you know, uh, tag you in this post when it uploads and everything. And again this yeah, was thank too you, awesome thank you thank you for listening to my story and letting us share and inspire someone hopefully someone is inspired a little bit to go and be great or be better than they were yesterday a thousand percent any enhancement that's that's a good one <laughs> okay well godspeed to you and
be safe out there. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime, anytime. We'll return after these messages. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always, am I the winner? Yeah, <laughs> not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts, or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR. We add them to our queues. We wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays. We time shift. The Time Shifters podcast. Sci-fi, horror, fantasy, superheroes, comedy, action, film, television, maybe some not-so-current events. Find us on iTunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com. Cool thing about Blind Knowledge is we are in multiple countries. We are worldwide all across the globe. We are in the U.S. We are in the U.K. We are in Canada, Germany, India, Japan. We're in Australia, y'all. Blindknowledge.com. Now back to the feature presentation. Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, all things that we love, all manga that were originally published in the legendary magazine Weekly Shonen Jump. But not every series can run for 300 chapters and have a hit anime. This is David. This is Jordan. We're the hosts of Shonen Flop. Each episode, we look at manga that ran and jumped that didn't quite make it. We discuss what it did wrong, what it did right, how the series could have turned itself around, and ultimately, was it a flop or not? Run all your favorite podcast apps, and you can find us at shonenflop.com. Keep on flopping, floppers. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a